Well, 20 years ago, a 12-year-old rocked the Earth Summit in Rio with a plea to world leaders to get serious about saving the planet. Her name was Severin Suzuki, and she'll join us later in the broadcast. She's back in Rio. But first, we turn to another young environmentalist, 17-year-old Brittany Trilford of Wellington, New Zealand. On Wednesday, she addressed more than 100 heads of state at the opening plenary of the Rio Plus 20 UN Earth Summit. Thank you, Secretary General and leaders, for the opportunity to address this plenary. Tina Koto from New Zealand. My name is Brittany Trilford. I'm 17 years old. I'm a child. Today, in this moment, I'm all children, your children, the world's three billion children. Think of me as half the world. I stand here with fire in my heart. I'm confused and angry at the state of the world. And I want us to work together now to change this. We are here today to solve the problems that we have caused as a collective to ensure that we have a future. You and your governments have promised to reduce poverty and sustain our environment. You have already promised to combat climate change, to ensure clean water and food security. Multinational corporations have already pledged to respect the environment, green their production, compensate for their pollution. These promises have been made, and yet still, our future is in danger. We are all aware that time is ticking, and we are quickly running out. You have 72 hours to decide the fate of your children, my children, my children's children. And I start the clock now. Tick, tick. Let us think back 20 years ago, well before I was even an inkling in my parents' eyes. Think back here to Rio, where people met at the first Earth Summit in 1992. The people at this summit knew there needed to be change. All our systems were failing, collapsing all around us. And these people, came together to acknowledge these challenges, to work for something better, to commit to something better. They made great promises, promises that when I read them, still leave me feeling hopeful. These promises are left not broken, but empty. How can that be when all around us not, there is knowledge that offers us solutions? Nature, as a design tool, offers insight into systems that are whole, complete, that give life, create value, allow progress, transformation, and change. We, the next generation, demand change. Demand action so that we can have a future. We trust you in the next 72 hours to put our interests before all other interests and boldly do the right thing. I am here to fight for my future. That's why I'm here. And I would like to end today by asking you to consider why you're here 
and what you can do. Are you here to save face? Or are you here to save us? Thank you. That was 17-year-old Brittany Trilford, a young environmentalist from Wellington, New Zealand, addressing more than 100 world leaders, business representatives, NGOs during the opening plenary of the Rio Plus 20 UN Summit, the largest UN summit ever. She's joining us now from Rio de Janeiro, where the Rio Plus 20 Summit is taking place. Brittany, welcome to Democracy Now! What was it like to be up there? You're addressing um, the majority of the world's leaders. What do you expect to come from your speech on this summit? Well, it felt amazing. It was, um, it was, it was very nerve-wracking, but very, very exciting. I hope that the world leaders can listen to my speech, that they feel what I was trying to say, that they understand the atmosphere and the, the ideas that I was trying to portray there, and that they're driven to, to fulfill the promises that, that I asked of them, to act now, to act urgently, and to act boldly. And uh, Brittany, can you tell us uh, something of your how you first became involved in, in environmental activism, what, what prompted you, and, and how you ended up being chosen to uh, make this a presentation? Uh, sure. Well, I've always been really into youth affairs and giving youth a voice. And um, I received an email from one of the networks that I'm part of um, about this Date with History competition. And it's run by Tick Tick Tick, um, a, a collaboration of over 300 NGOs. And they asked me to give a two minute speech to the world leaders about the future that I want. And um, I completely jumped at it because I have a lot to say <laughs> about the future that I want. I have a lot of demands. Um, and so I thought, well, this is perfect. This is the, this is the audience that, that needs to hear this. And how did you make your way from New Zealand to Rio? Uh, were you a group of high school students? Um, who paid your way? Um, well, it was, it was just me that went um, with the Date With History competition, and I joined the Tick 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 team over in Rio here. Um, I came along with my, my dad as well, so he's here in Rio with me. And in terms of what you hope to see take place, the whole issue of climate change, how does climate change affect New Zealand, where you come from, Wellington, New Zealand? Uh, okay, well, climate change affects everywhere in the world very dramatically, and it will continue to uh, progress and, and sink deeper and deeper, and more of our systems will fail and collapse. So I think that in terms of how, uh, how it affects Wellington, I think it affects Wellington just as much as other places all over the world. I mean, every day um, when I'm in Wellington, I, I see the effects of climate change. I, I can, it's snowing in Wellington. It hasn't snowed in Wellington um, for the last 50 years. So that's, it's just little things like that that are going to build and build into something really big and, and really irreversible and something really uh, awful. <laughs> Uh, after your presentation, did any of the uh, delegates uh, come up to you, talk to you directly, or, or uh, comment on your presentation and its uh, impact, if any, on uh, their work there? Uh, yeah, I think, um, well, lots of the delegates uh, and lots of people watching on, on TV and, and things like that responded really well. I think what I said, because it was so simplistic, because it was a 17-year-old's view of the moral truths of what is happening here, they could really relate to what I was saying. And I think it resonated with a lot of people. I think the delegates that did come up and comment to me, because it was so simple, they understood what I was trying to say. And they, they felt the passion, not just of me, but of all the youth that, that I was trying to, to share there. Uh, finally, Brittany, um, you only got five minutes, uh, but that was five minutes where you were addressing the world. Um, is there anything you didn't get to say in that address that you had to edit out for time? And especially as you address young people around the world, many of whom may feel whatever they do does not make a difference. 
Okay, well, something I I have said in, in the other speeches, but not that I couldn't particularly portray in the UN um, plenary, was that this power of youth, this absolute it's such a powerful force and sometimes I think they underestimate themselves. We have tools and technologies available to us like social media, like radio and TV, where we can share ideas, where we can communicate, where we can educate and it's such a valuable powerful tool. This, this, the voice of youth is so strong, so clear, so truthful and I think that that they can really not only speak truth to power like I did at the UN plenary, but they can take power. And I think that's really important to look at. And I think that's really something that the youth should take on board, should get involved with, should engage with. And I think it's really something I wanted to share at the, the UN plenary for sure. And I think I'll continue to share that message um, through media like yourselves. Well, Brittany Trilford, I want to thank you very much for being with us from Wellington, New Zealand, now in Rio de Janeiro at the largest UN summit ever.